Hello, my name is Mark Brown. This is another Super Home 59 video, and this video concerns general insulation measures around the house. This is a close up of our hot water cylinder inside the own cupboard. I won't pan the camera too far up, it's just full of towels and shelves. So it operates as a normal airing cupboard. In that respect, we're no different from any other house. The cylinder itself is quite narrow and quite tall, taller and narrower than a normal cylinder you'll see in a 1980s built house. Um, the thing to point out here, if you can just about see, is the insulation around all now the you pipes. You can just buy that at any DIY store. That's relatively simple to fit yourself. Next on our tour of insulation projects, DIY insulation projects around the house, and they were all DIY apart from cavity wall insulation, are the radiators. Now, of course, you, know, you don't insulate the radiators, but what I have done behind the radiators is to install a polystyrene backed silver foil layer that you can buy from DIY stores. Now, it's hard to see, so I'm going to have to take the camera off the tripod and poke it down the back for you. Now, here you can see. If you follow my finger, the polystyrene and foil backed layer. This you buy from a DIY store in a roll. Now here's one of the rolls. It's a bit chopped up. This is what I have left over after the project. And it might be hard to see, but it is literally just polystyrene one side and foil on the reverse. One of these rolls from a DIY store is probably enough to do an entire house, probably enough to do two houses. So you can use... The only thing I can say is that it does suffer from wear and tear. It's extremely fragile. So if you're like us and we occasionally put some, some wet washing down on top of the radiator to, to dry, then occasionally the fingernails do dig in and it does look a bit tatty here and there. But tuck it well behind the radiator and you can't see it. Now that's another thing. Now fitting that stuff is a little bit awkward. It's behind a radiator. Most of us are not going to remove the radiator in order to do that. So what I do recommend is you get a nice long pole, like a, kit, a garden cane or something like that, and, and shove it down there. Don't get anything that's sharp that can actually um, rip the foil, because it is the foil that's facing outwards, okay? Now the purpose of all this actually is to make sure that all the warmth from your radiators bounces back into the room and also to insulate the wall behind so it's not absorbed into the wall behind and straight out of your house. That increases the responsiveness of your radiators, it increases the responsiveness of your heating system to your needs. You want it hot, it'll get hot a lot quicker and feel a lot warmer once you fit this. It will cut your fuel bills. One of the last major DIY projects we did in this house was the internal insulation to the front door where we stand today. Okay, this was a, originally a single skinned wooden door. Um, at the frame it's probably about an inch thick, but actually in the panels it was barely five millimetres. We did a thermal imaging survey of the house and found the front door was the weakest point. And in fact, I find from many thermal imaging surveys the front door on most homes, even the most modern, is really, really the worst performing area. It's quite a small portal, but actually it's just a piece of wood and sometimes a PVC, okay? So, if you have an old door, you have a couple of choices. One is to completely replace it. That's going to cost you a few hundred pounds. We live in a conservation area, so any change to the fabric of the building is going to be questioned. It could actually be refused. Although our neighbours have chosen to actually do a like for like replacement and actually have a door built for them, we did ours for far less money. And what we did, we just retained the original door and then put an internal layer here of insulation. Yeah. A complete step-by-step -step phase build has been photographed and is on our website that you see at the bottom of the screen now. Okay, so first thing we did was to buy an inch thick layer of polystyrene and that was put inside this inset. Okay, the photographs make it much clearer, that's what I'm talking about. It was then glued in place with a quite tight fit, the same down here as well. Okay, the next thing we did, we, we fit these wooden panels over top. Okay, now those wooden panels um, are a decorative feature you buy in DIY stores. It's just MDF and it's 
actually quite expensive. The idea of the panels actually is they go against the wall normally and create a decorative Victorian feel to your house. We repurposed them here and used, I think we used a couple of sheets, two or three sheets here from a DIY store, just cut them to shape with the window in the middle here and glued and nailed them over top of the polystyrene to ensure that it had a good cosmetic look to it. So one of the features I want to point out to you is what we've done here. This is a polycarbonate clear plastic little window we've put in. It's actually effectively double glazing now. If you look closely, you can see the original glass windows are obviously still in place outside. So we've effectively created double glazing here by fitting another small little square piece of plastic. And it's quite tough, quite hard. Don't buy a cheap bit of plastic. Spend some money on this, even if you have to buy a big sheet. All we've done here on the edges is to apply some white sealant to stick it in and make sure it's all sealed in. When we first did it, we had a bit of conversation inside, I was quite concerned, um, but actually after a few days it just cleared up, so don't be too wide if that happens. This is an eco flap letterbox, not the original one we had fitted. We first had an internal um, brush flap, but what we found after the years, the brush just bent out, so when the, le the postman put the the parcels through and the letters through, it just pushed it away and ended up being bent. It, it was completely useless after wasp and drafts. So along comes Eco Flap, and you can buy these in the UK in various colours online. It's quite a simple little box, it's universal, it fits all sizes, you fit it on the inside. And what it is, it's a balanced flap. I open it up like that, it's not quite clear why it's unique until I do this. You see it lifts out, okay? Normally it pops away. Now the point is, if you get a draft coming into the house, the larger areas at the top, and it will actually force the seal, it will force the flap to close, okay? That's the idea, that's its main selling point, is that it will stop drafts. It actually does it very well. What they don't tell you, of course, is that if the wind is blowing the other way, that will happen, okay? It doesn't really happen. We don't get that kind of strong draft, not in a house, so it's, it's not really a problem. But it's great because it allows you to get your parcels, and there's a couple of inches of space there, get your parcels through the door, and there's a, there's a secondary flap on the inside as well. And actually, on the outside of the door, there's quite a powerful metal uh, sprung flap as well. So the postman has to lift that, push the letters through, all the way through, and this is they just pop out of the carpet down here, so it all works very well. Okay, here we have a little flap to cover the key hole, okay? We don't use this very often, but it helps to stop the draft, as you can see. We had a narrow space to fit it in, so we had to cut a slot for it in the um, door seal. This is an edge seal that you can buy at DIY stores. I haven't used it in the conventional way. It's actually not designed for this sort of door. And it's actually also quite expensive again. Now when I got quite close to it, you see it's nailed into place, it has a copper effect. And what we have here, if I can just about pull it out for you, is this sort of V-section rubber seal. And actually I fitted two going in the opposite direction, so one section here, one section here, so the V fits over the other V. Not always simple to show you that. There's the inner V and there's the outer V. An unconventional use for this, but actually it works very well. Now if I open the door, that sort of satisfying wok sound that sort of breaks the seal. So that effectively is sealing the door very nicely and giving us a very good seal against any drafts. And at the bottom we have a, another type of seal. These are also available from DIY stores. That's just a rubber strip there that seals the bottom of the door. What I'm going to do is have a look at this door here, the one that was opposite the front door. We're going to look at the bottom of the door. I'm going to pan the camera down. And here we can see a brush strip, again, available from DIY stores. Very simply, it's nailed in. You have to cut it to length because it's like a large length and you cut to shorten it. Simple to do, you cut it 
screw it to the bottom of the door. See, this is a wooden laminate floor, so there's no way of sealing this inner door against the drafts from the front door. So this does it very effectively indeed. Okay, and what we have, you can't quite see it, is this very ill-fitting door in an ill-fitting door frame that rather than paying a lot of money to have it all replaced, we simply fitted this white strip here. You can't see it very easily again, but it goes all the way around the door, all the way around the top. Now, what is that white strip? Well, it's this stuff, okay? Let me show it to you. Now, there's two pieces here, so actually, if I just split it away like that, you can see that it's a P shape. And when you look for it in DIY stores, I think that's what's called P shaped door insulator. So, there's your letter P, okay. On the back is a self adhesive sticky layer, like so. Peel it off, stick it to the door, and it's spongy like this, you see, compresses. Idea is it fills the gap around any leaky door frames. We're now outside on a very bright sunny day in July. I'm looking at the external wall to talk about cavity wall insulation. Most homes built after the wall have a cavity, can be filled. Um, if you want to know whether your house has a cavity or not, if your brick pattern looks like this, with the bricks side on, then you're likely to have a cavity. If you can see bricks at the end on, then you probably don't. Okay. Does your house have cavity wall insulation or not? Whether you, if you see these little telltale holes, pointing out here, and I will zoom in on that, then yes you do. Let's zoom in. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our flying visit around Superhome 59 looking at miscellaneous DIY and capital insulation projects. Your host myself has been Mark Brown. You're welcome to visit Superhome 59. Just go to www.superhomes.org.uk forward slash 59 and you can come and visit us and have a look and kick the tyres. And in the meantime, you too can conquer your house.